Dan Associate Professor of Public Policy Michael Shires joins us now uh, to continue the, the discussion. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, so as Dave said in his story, one of the biggest uh, surprises, Kasich, if anyone forgot that he was still in this, taking second. Then again, he did spend almost all of his money there. He did, and you know, he had to take second to survive. His goal is to try and last till the Midwest, and hopefully he can take his home state, although there's polls showing him neck and neck with Trump. The one thing that the other candidates can take from him, though, is he had a very positive message. He didn't get in the mudslinging. Right. And it worked well for him tonight. You know, you say trying to last. Let's talk about the sixth, seventh, and eighth place people here, because that's Chris Christie, Carly Fiorina, and Ben Carson. Can they realistically stay in this race? We know that Chris Christie says he may have an announcement tomorrow that he's out. Well, he's going to think hard about it. This was his chance. He scored his big uh, hit on yeah. Marco Rubio. He thought he was going to win. Turned out Jeb Bush and John Kasich collected those can you know, the benefit from his attack on Could we see three out of the race? I think we're going to see, uh, yeah, we could see as many as three. Yeah. Uh, Carson's already announced, though, he's going to South Carolina. It's an African-American state. It's yeah. also an evangelical state. So he kind of wants to see what's going to happen. What about the big message tonight, the message to the, the, the favorite candidates. At this point, that, that would be uh, Trump and, and, and Hillary Clinton. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. You know, who were at one time the favorite candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, Trump wins big. Uh, the establishment candidates on the Republican side, not so good. And on the other hand, Bernie Sanders with a landslide over Hillary. What does that mean? Well, you know, about half of all the voters in both parties are really unhappy with their parties. And so you saw it with Bernie Sanders tonight really having success against Hillary. Can he duplicate that in other states that have a more traditional base like South Carolina and Nevada? We'll see. Remember, it was the students and the young who came out for Barack Obama in 2008 to overturn Hillary's plans then. And those are the same folks that Bernie's getting out today. It's a different landscape in South Carolina, though, right? Absolutely. He's got to find a way to connect with the African-American community to really over... I mean, Hillary's had a lead as much as 20 or 30 percent in some of the polls. So he's got a lot of work to do there. But, you know, momentum's a strange thing, as yeah. we saw in 2008. Well, you know, there are some candidates that um, we can pretty much say are probably are, are, are out of this. Do you think there's anyone that you can f for sure say... They're, they've, I mean, they've been, they're in it for the long run. We're going to see them for a while. Well, I think Bush has the resources to stay in. I think Rubio does. I think South Carolina is going to be a big battlefield for them. They both need to win it to show they can win on Super Tuesday. It's only, you know, two or three weeks away, and they have to get that base mobilized with their big organizations. Yeah. About a seventh of the Republican delegates are going to be on the ballot in one day. If it comes down to money, though, Kasich has pretty much spent all of his money uh, in New Hampshire. He has. He kind of has the hope that people are sympathetic to that uh -huh. and that the establishment might see him as a foil to Donald Trump in Ohio to kind of block Donald Trump getting 50% of the delegates going into the convention. Yeah. You mentioned Rubio. Let's talk about that because he had a very bad performance that debate on Saturday. That certainly seemed to affect him here in New Hampshire. And actually, he even apologized to his supporters tonight about that performance. He did. And, and, and you saw it. He was polling at about 18%. Yeah. He comes in at about 10% tonight. I mean, it was a big hit. It's kind of like Donald Trump skipping Iowa. Right. Probably cost him uh, the Iowa vote. Uh, these debates are having a big impact. Rubio is going to have to refine that positive message, and he's going to have to start coming up with a range of uh, ways to express his ideas sure. and not kind of saying the same thing. That's really what Outside killed him in that debate. Outside of just those little bullet points. Yeah. Yeah. Do you anticipate that as we go to South Carolina, Nevada caucuses, and then Super Tuesday, will, do you think Bernie Sanders has enough to really engage Hillary Clinton in a tight, rough campaign the rest of the way? I think the next three weeks will tell us. I mean, obviously, March 1st will be a huge day for both campaigns. But if he can get those students going and if he can get the young mobilized, I mean, Hillary did horribly amongst the young. The only demographic she really took was households over 200,000 and, and people that were over age of 65. If she can't get a broader base than that out, her campaign's in trouble. She yeah. didn't even win, win women in New Hampshire, yeah. which is hard, hard to believe, right? Well, especially after all the Madeleine Albright and Gloria Steinem comments yeah. of the week. You really yeah. expected that to mobilize some folks. And what about well, Sanders? It was almost like an inauguration speech tonight. It was pretty long, wasn't it? <laughs> well, it was, well yeah. you know, he's <laughs> trying to portray that image. He also yeah. understands this may be his last he's chance at the, the microphone yeah. for a while. Kasich, Mike, thank you so much Kasich for Kasich said he spoke so long he turned 77 while he was giving <laughs> a speech. So. Sure felt all right, like gentlemen, it. thank Thanks you. Thanks so much for your expertise.